cameras rolling. Good game. You're all good? My name's Kai Layton, I'm 18 years old. I train out in Northern Kings Muay Thai Gym in Newcastle. I'm also the founder and company director of The Mental Shift. The Mental Shift is a revolutionary mental health company which uses Muay Thai as the primary method in providing support and education to people across the north of England. This is including Newcastle primarily, Manchester, uh, Liverpool, Leeds and all the way up to Scotland. The Mental Shift has a bit of a backstory or quite a lot of a backstory to be honest. Um, we are run by young people, we are for young people and our whole development process is with the advice of young people. It all started off um, with my own personal stories with mental health. Um, in February 2020, I remember it quite clearly, it was um, Monday the 24th I believe, I went home from school, I sat on my bed and I took what should have been essentially a lethal overdose. A lot of people ask me why I'm religious or why I do what I do and it's purely because of the fact that that night I should have died but instead I went to sleep with the belief I wasn't going to wake up and I woke up in the morning and I went to school like a normal day, went to sleep thought you know it's taking a bit of time to kick in, I'm not going to wake up in the morning and I woke up again. For me, when I went to hospital and I got checked out, um, the doctor told me I shouldn't be alive. <laughs> Whether he's allowed to say that or not, I'm not too sure, but he said with the amount of tablets I took, which it was over 200, um, I should have died more or less within a couple of hours, but I lived to tell the tale. And the, the, the thing that stands out most to me wasn't even the suicide attempt, but it was the fact that a week before that, I was in Benton House, which is a mental health um, outpatient uh, service in Newcastle. And me and my mum, me and my mum, we were sat in two chairs with a mental health support worker opposite. And I remember her saying that, you know, she'll only offer us, she'll only offer me support if I'll take it, because obviously they can't force me to get help. And I remember sitting there saying, nah, I'll be fine, it's just a phase, I'll get over it. And a week later, I took an attempt on my life. And at the time, you know, you can't really see clearly, you can't reason with yourself. Because when all that's going through your head, you know, a lot of people said, think about your family, think about your mum. And at that moment, you can't. All you can think about is the fact that for me anyway, I thought they'd be better off without me. People would say, think about your family and in my mind, I was thinking about my family because I was saying the amount of pain and trouble I'm causing them, if I'm gone, surely they'll be better off. A lot of my problems stemmed from my childhood. I was a happy kid. Um, my mum provided. She gave me everything she could. And I can't remember a moment in my childhood in which I was truly, truly down. But I do remember quite a lot of my childhood, which looking back now, it had a huge impact. Um, my dad wasn't around, he left me when I was two years old, something I rem remember quite clearly. My mum, I remember, well I, I don't remember but um, looking back now, it's quite clear that my mum would go days on end, she'd go to bed without eating that day <clears throat> to provide for me and my sister um, and with, with her working so much, she, she worked a care job, she did in-house care for people with quite bad disabilities and whatnot came the fact that me and my sister were the only ones at home. I, I was quite a good kid in year seven. I behaved, did all my work. Some people would call the teacher's pet. Year eight, that changed. Came back from summer holidays and um, I was always getting into trouble, always misbehaving, always getting sent out of class. And even then, and up until year 11, the school saw me as a bad kid who didn't want to learn, a kid who was oppositional, and a lot of teachers there did help me. I remember one teacher specifically was my head of house, Mr Mather. Um, the things he did for me to try and stop me from getting kicked out of school. And he was one of the few people who actually tried to help me. But everyone else, but they would 
label me as a bad child. But what they didn't realise was that was my form of coping. It was my way of distracting myself. Because if you think of it as you've always got this thought going through your mind, you know, you're not worth it, you're, you're causing all this hassle to people. And at one point it got so bad in which I was constantly thinking about killing myself and how I would do it. My way of distracting myself was, from that was to cause trouble. So whether that is, you know, throwing books across the classroom, arguing with teachers, flipping desks, whatever it is. Whilst I'm doing that, that's what I'm thinking about. And I'm not thinking about the, the things that are going through my head. I'm thinking about causing trouble. I remember one time a teacher sat down and she said, why do you do it? And I said, it's my way to, to distract myself. And she sat there, she looked at me in the eyes and she said, I don't believe you. She got up and walked out. Um, and there was a lot of stuff that happened. You know, life at home at that time was, it was better, but stuff was still going on at that age. Um, I was a lot more aware of it. I was a lot, the impact it was having on me because of how aware I was and the fact that I knew what was happening it would it would reflect on my day to day life um, and you know that more or less leads up to the suicide attempt I made and from from that period from year nine to year ten um, I also did try to help a lot of people so I created a youth mental health initiative called Be Here to Young Voice which similar to the mental shift it would provide support and education to young people um, in educational environments so not only was I dealing with my own stuff getting in trouble at school coming home saying that reflected in um, my mum telling me off all the time I was then going onto my phone and I was providing support to all these other people online who you know they saw, they saw my page they saw what I was doing and they wanted help so then I was dealing with my problems, my family's problems and other people's problems and I wasn't balancing it very well. Um, and I remember it was, it was a month after my suicide attempt in which I got sent out of my classroom with normal thing. Um, two teachers sat there telling us off. And then all of a sudden something came into my mind. Um, jump off a bridge, just kill yourself. You, it's, you know, it's not worth it. Uh, you're not worth it. And I remember I just walked away, floods of tears. One of the teachers followed me. And all I remember is just saying, I wish it worked. I wish, I wish I'm dead. You know, I don't want to be here. And the way the school dealt with it was, was poor on their behalf, which once again contributed to the fact that I should have got help after that, but I didn't get help. Um, and that year I made three further suicide attempts which a lot of people don't realise a suicide attempt is doing something in a bid to take your life. You don't need to be in hospital hooked up to wires getting CPR. It's just doing something with the main aim of killing yourself. And one time, and this is one of the things that breaks my heart the most, the fact that um, I came home, tried to kill myself again, had a huge pile of house settlement, and my mum came in and she found us. I didn't do anything, I didn't take anything, but she came in, she saw us with the power set of all, a bottle of water. And at that moment, it was like, what am I doing with my life? And from there, it didn't even get better from there. You know, some people, they say, oh, I did this, I, I regretted it, I made a huge change. But for me, a year later, I was still struggling to the point in which I developed an eating disorder, which led to me putting on too much weight, far too much weight to the point in which when I first started Muay Thai training um, I was 120 kg at 6 foot which for anyone who knows is that's massively unhealthy. Um, that led to body dysmorphia, the fact that I hated the way I looked and no matter whether I was skinny, fat, whatever, I'd always be judging myself and criticising myself on how I looked which then you know contributed to depression and it was just an ongoing cycle one problem led to the other and the eating disorder got so bad in which um, another thing that stands out quite clear to me I, I would after school I'd go to my local shop and I would steal all this sort of chocolate cookies whatever it was because I'd have a bad day at school or the thoughts would keep on coming 
and my only way to cope with that was to eat and it was a binge eating disorder and I'd eat all this food all in one go and that was you know even afterwards I'd feel really guilty about it and I'd I'd hate myself for it but in the moment it took away the pain quite similar to when I, I, I was self-harm and yeah it hurt yeah it marked your skin and I think when I was in the hospital he sat there and he counted 75 individual um, marks that I made on my on my arm but in that time the only thing I can describe it as is if you get a balloon and you poke a hole in it like a helium balloon poke a hole in it the air slowly pours out of it and for me every cut I made my problems would slowly release even just for that split second that feeling of some sort of peace would it was worth it and that that more or less leads me up to January 2022 um, in which prior to that a few months before I talked to my head coach Craig Jones because I was looking to develop my mental health initiative and I was like help us out we want to offer some sort of physical health program to schools and at this point I was still struggling I was massively overweight my main focus was still on helping other people and he said what we'll do we'll train you for free for a year lead you up to a fight and we'll showcase your progress and your development and you know even a few months into it I fell in love with with Muay Thai that replaced the self-harm that replaced the eating disorder that was more or less my way out um, I would go every night in the evening I would train hard I'd train with people who were supportive um, and from there within a year not even a year within 10 months I lost um, over 40 kg I had my first amateur K1 fight which I unfortunately lost but took all part of the game at the end of the day um, but what a lot of people don't say is they see the progress I made but they don't see the ups and downs people think that I started training and I was starting to lose weight and all of a sudden click just like that I'm a lot better but it wasn't the case there was times within my training even close to my fight camp in which I would fluctuate up and down so I'd lose 10 kg then within a week I put it all back on because I'd have a period in which I wasn't feeling the best I was feeling I was feeling quite down so then I'd binge eat again and something that for the rest of my life I'm gonna have to keep on top of um, and I, I remember one time as well actually during my training I, I left uh, the gym after a session got about two minutes down the road just burst out into tears crying uh, had a mini mental breakdown because as I say yeah I'm doing better but problems still come things from my childhood things from my past will still creep up on you even when you're living life to the fullest then things can still hold you back October time um, I got matched for my first fight started training I did a 12 week fight camp lost a drastic amount of weight I was the most confident happiest I've ever been before I did leave quite a few things to very last minute my fight camp um, I, I lost what 8kg in the last 3 weeks a 12 week fight camp I had 15kg to lose it should have been done easily but I didn't take it seriously till the last few weeks so I was rushing with my diet I was on 5 500 to 1000 calories a day for the most of it completely drained of energy had to do a, a, a 1kg water cut to make that weight weighed in uh, below happiest once again most happiest healthiest confident I've ever been before I stepped in the ring lost um, which afterwards I, I, I wasn't upset because I lost you know I, I walked away I was, I was on the verge of crying um, but it wasn't because I lost the fighters because in my mind I'd went through 10 months of training and personal development and progress I'd overcome something that I never thought I'd overcome and all that went to waste because I went, there, went in there, didn't do my best and lost. Um, that only lasted a brief amount of time because um, then after that I was the most motivated I've ever been. Um, I was ready to, to fight again. I'm still ready to fight again at some point early 2023. And all that is essentially what is one long story. That is the history of the mental shift. The mental shift is built from the fact that I went through something that not a lot of people go through, not a lot of people come out of. And that's not their fault. A lot of people don't have the support or the knowledge to know that 
yeah, I should do this in order to better myself or I should do this or that or the other. And that's what we want to do, is what we want to provide people. We want to provide people with the knowledge and the support they need to say, yes, I'm in a bad place. I don't know how to get out of it. Help me. Or even if not in a bad place when we talk to them, we're providing them with the knowledge they need to be able to say, yes, I'm in a bad place. I know this because I recognise the signs. These are a few things I can do to better myself. What we're doing as a mental shift is where we've got four main aims, and that is to support and educate and to collaborate and share. And we're going to work with as many like-minded organisations, companies, brands, gyms, individuals as possible who share the mutual goal of spreading awareness around mental health. And we're offering programmes. We're offering an all-in-one training programme, a um, Knives Down Gloves Up programme. We're working in secondary schools. Um, we're doing YouTube content. We're going to be doing fundraising and events. And it's something we're really looking forward to and it's something that so far has already had a huge impact. The Mental Shift is a story of a young lad who should have died that night on the 24th of February, but didn't. And the one thing I'll, I'll, I'll always remember, there's quite a lot of things actually, but the main thing is the conversation I had with the adult psychologist because the child's mental health team were taking too long came down and talked to me and he said use this story to push for change and that's something that be heard young voice that's what that started off of and that's what the mental shift comes off of the fact that I've got a story to tell there's changes that need to be made put both of them together and and here we are the main thing that I always tell people is the fact that it's make or break. What you're going through, the, the, the hardship you're going through, the adversity, the struggle, whether you see it in that moment or not, it's up to you as to whether it makes you into a much better, stronger, more resilient person or breaks you down completely and in a lot of instances leaves families, leaves families um, without a loved one. You are in complete control whether you see that or not. All you need to do is reach out. In my instance, I found Muay Thai as my sort of way out, my way to better myself. Might not be the same for you, I do recommend it, but just find something to work on. Find something that, will, that you're passionate about, that, will, that you're interested in, and something that will help you get out of that dark space. Because as much as in the moment it feels like it lasts forever, it doesn't. And that is only going to be a small portion of your life that hopefully will turn you into a much better, stronger, more resilient person.